Hello guys, hope you're doing well. And today, this is going to be the first video, the first episode of this new series and this new project that I'm trying to create. So since it's the first episode and again, the first video, I just want to explain a little bit about what it's going to be and what you guys can expect of. Hopefully, we're going to take and have one of these videos every single week on where we're going to discuss different goalkeeper aspects, for example, um, goalkeeper topics, goalkeeper trainings. We're going to do some different breakdowns about different techniques. We're going to do breakdowns about training sessions. We're going to, I'm um, also going to try to bring guests where we'll be able to present, we'll be able to have conversation and listen to your stories. So again, so for the people that don't know me, my name is Juan Sayel. I'm currently a division one goalkeeper coach. I played as a goalkeeper all my life. I played in Colombia, then came to the United States, played here, played for college, and now I turn into the goalkeeper coach. So I have had the privilege of meeting great people, and now with social media, with all this technology, I have been able to open up a little bit more and share something about goalkeeping. Of course, I don't know all the secrets. I don't know all the things I'm willing to learn, and this is part of it. I mean, while I'm developing this, I'll be learning a lot. I'll be learning a ton. And I think it's a beautiful space since the goalkeeper era. I mean, not the goalkeeper area, but the goalkeeper itself is a small niche. So I really want to get more involved in this and bring more opportunity for people to learn more about goalkeeping. Now, coming back to it, to the topic. The goal with this is to put it on YouTube. Of course, if you follow me on social media, I will be posting this stuff in social media as well. But you will also be able to listen to the episodes on Spotify. I understand sometimes, like even myself, I complain of how like the videos are in YouTube, but they are not in Spotify, and then I cannot really hear the the show. So I rather to just listen the whole thing in podcast in Spotify or something like that, and then watch the whole thing in YouTube. Of course, there are sometimes that there are going to be some videos, but I just want to keep it more of something you can listen besides you watching. And if you ever want to watch, just save like the time of the video or time of the podcast, then you can go to YouTube and watch the video or the clip that we'll be speaking about. So awesome. After talking about that, let's start again. This is the first episode. Don't expect for me to have all this discussion way before the presentation. So on today's topic, I just want to go really abroad. Uh, of course, I want to keep it tight and go straight to the topic. Uh, we want to talk, or I want to talk about the modern goalkeeper. So basically, as a small overview of what are the goals for this presentation is, first of all, just the introduction to the modern goalkeeper. We know that the goalkeeper position has changed a lot every, every year. Things change, but of course, a decade ago, the position was really different, and nowadays, this is the new era of the modern goalkeeper. Uh, something I want to talk about is the anatomy of the modern goalkeeper. Again, body shapes, what, what they're looking for, the famous question of like high matters, all this stuff we're going to speak about. We're going to speak about the principles, the distribution role, and what is the role of the goalkeeper in the pitch. Also, I want to share some examples. And finally, I want to share some tips about what to do next or what to expect afterwards. Okay, coming with the introduction. So I put these three pictures over here. If you guys don't recognize that it's okay, if you're young and you don't know who's the first guy or the, even the middle guy, it's okay. But something I do want to mention, if you are willing to get better, be a better goalkeeper, you need to start studying goalkeepers, of course. Again, like business guys didn't make it all the way to a business like to a big business just by their own knowledge. They look forward, they learn from other people, and that's what you need to do as a goalkeeper. You also need to bring this to this area. So if you are wanting to be a goalkeeper, you need to start studying the goalkeepers and see what they do. So first person in the left is, I put it because he's Colombian, <laughs> but he did play an important role. Uh, you're gonna see why. His name is René Guitan. People used to call him crazy. So why did I put him? Because he was he was not a traditional goalkeeper. So in those times, there was aspect of the goalkeeper just being a goalkeeper, honestly, just making the save. Uh, nobody really cared about what he does with the feet or stuff like that. 
However, him and other, like for example, Jorge Campos as well, they change kind of the way they play. So Rene Guita, he actually scored a lot of goals. He used to like, he used to go out of the field, play with the feet, and honestly, like people will be willing to give him the ball and see what he will do because he was really good with the feet and he wanted to push and see what he can bring to the game. Of course, again, during that period of time, this was something where it wasn't something that all the goalkeepers were doing and that's why he got so much recognition because it was crazy. For people, it was nuts that he was going out of the field and playing with the feet. <clears throat> then, again, that was in the past and things didn't really change after that. Then we go like to a middle stage where we found, for example, Iker, Iker Casillas. Iker Casillas, Buffon, all these goalkeepers, Julio Cesar, they were good goalkeepers. But again, they just played the role of being a goalkeeper, just making the being a good leader, making the shot, saving the shots, and sometimes just playing with the feet, just doing the basic stuff, distribution, nothing really special. In fact, if you think about it, if you are like my age or a little bit older, you, will, you, you won't recognize these goalkeepers because of the distribution. For example, Victor Valdez with Barcelona. People used to say, like, hey, he doesn't know how to play with the feet. If he has the ball in the feet, just pressure him. And he did make a lot of mistakes with the feet. So, again, during this stage, during this middle stage, the distribution or them playing outside wasn't as crucial. It was more about how can you make the save and all this. After, after a couple of years and a couple of months, then we can see and find somebody like Neuer. If, again, if you have been looking at the goalkeepers and stuff like that, you understand that Neuer is kind of the combination of Iker Casillas and Iguita, these two kind of goalkeepers, where now the goalkeeper plays an important role outside of the field and is also part of the team. It's part of the distribution. He's the extra guy sometimes, and still, he's still making the saves and he's doing all these good things that a goalkeeper should be doing. He's a great leader. He's great with the distribution, and he's a shot stopper. So again, as we can see, we went from all these to a classic, a traditional, and now back to a swing goalkeeper, sweep goalkeeper. OK, the anatomy. So something we, we also can see a little bit is that goalkeepers have changed. So again, in the past, it really doesn't matter. In fact, it was like, OK, you needed to be skinny. That was one of the most crucial things. And it's funny because people will say like, oh, the fat person should be a goalkeeper because he doesn't need to run, but not really. If you start looking for goalkeepers, you really didn't find that many fat goalkeepers. They normally tend to be skinnier and tall, right? And that was kind of the case with Courtois. If you actually think like recent Courtois ages, like the Heao, Courtois, all like all these goalkeepers were kind of skinny and tall. And that's what people were looking for, right? Because that first, first, impression of like, oh, the goalkeeper needs to be tall, matters a lot. Now things have changed. Of course, the goalkeeper is still involved in like all the other positions where they need to be a better athlete. So of course, putting weight, putting muscle is going to be crucial. Again, if you compare, for example, Iker Casillas, he wasn't like the most muscular guy. He wasn't the leanest guy near. But now if you compare Casillas with Ter Stegen, for example, Ter Stegen, you can see he goes to a gym, he works out, and he looks actually really decent as an athlete. It's same with Courtois. If you compare Courtois from ages to nowadays, Courtois has put a lot of muscle. So height. Again, height is going to be crucial. Goalkeepers tend to be 185, 190. Casillas used to be 185. Keylor now used to be 182, I believe so, but they were in that range, okay? So nowadays, if you want to play pro, you also need to be into that range of 185, 190. Each goalkeeper is going to be special. Each goalkeeper is going to have their own attributes. For example, Courtois, he can be really good on the air. He can be good at making like flying saves and all this, but he might struggle with the balls on the ground. Meanwhile, if you are in the range of 185, you might be able to excel in all of them. For example, Allison is another example, or even Ederson, but I believe Ederson is a little bit taller. Also, crucial, important reflexes and agility. It's going to be crucial. The speed, the people are shooting harder, all this. You need to have a really good hand-eye coordination. Something that people a lot doesn't really speak about is the core strength. Goalkeepers use a lot of the core. If you actually think about it, like on training and all that, their technique to get back 
into the position and all the movements and most of the things needs to be and it starts with the core. So it's crucial for you to have a good core strength. It's crucial for you to work out your core. And finally, and the most important is gonna be explosive powers, the legs, how, how can you jump? How explosive are you? And then you combine all of this and you have basically a modern goalkeeper. So again, a great example, Ter Stegen, he's 185 and 100% sure. He reflexes, agility is crucial. You can see him jumping, making high saves. You can see he can cut in crosses, all these different aspects, and the core strength and the explosive power. Okay, so going to the principles. Again, as we covered a little bit earlier, the young shot stopping, the more goalkeepers now is expected to contribute way more than just making the save, like it was before with, with the example of Buffon or Casillas. Now they need to be really important on the distribution, understanding the game, the tactical organization, and being that extra guy, being that com that extra coach on the, the field. The reason behind, of course, like everybody have heard that the goalkeeper is the one, the last person in the field, and is the one that is actually watching the whole the whole game, right? He's actually having the whole scene, he's able to communicate. So he sees different things that players normally don't see. Also, they have those small gaps of time where they can actually turn and look to different places. So it's gonna be for them to be really good with communication, but if you want to be good with the communication, you also need to be and understand all the tactics. <clears throat> Again, as we mentioned, the fit, the distribution is gonna be important. Pep Guardiola brought this with Ederson. Ederson does a fantastic job with this. If you want to learn more about distribution, I really recommend you to learn and I study air some more. Some other things about the more goalkeepers, some more principle is like the feedback and how easy for them is to receive feedback. Now they are able to watch their videos, watch the training session. Most of the goalkeeper coaches record the training sessions. We have different analysis of the other teams or strikers. So now the more goalkeeper is able to get all this information in and then make him better as a player. <clears throat> one other point over here that is really important. So again, let, let's read the points really quick. So shot stopping is going to be crucial. Uh, playing with their feet, it says over here, utilizing tools such as video, yeah, for sure. Able to adjust to different playing styles and formation, that's going to be crucial as well. Uh, sometimes teams are going to play with three in the back, they're going to play with four in the back. You need to be able to read and recognize all this, especially nowadays that there is like different formations, understanding how the team needs to press, how you want your midfielders to go, drop, who's going to stay, all this is going to be crucial. Now, imagine a goalkeeper playing for the club and then going to a national team and there's a whole different style of playing. So you need to, as a modern goalkeeper, you need to be able to recognize all the things. Proficient in both short and long passing, most likely, a more goalkeeper just play short, short, short. However, if the team is pressuring, then the gaps are going to be in the back, right? So you need to be able to play that long ball. Um, another <clears throat> characteristic of the modern goalkeeper that has changed a lot is the kind of volley that we do. So nowadays it's a famous side volley. But if you think about it, not probably most of the games, it's really hard to see just the goalkeeper pound the ball. Now they, they will bring it down and try to play. And then if they actually punt the ball, it's gonna be a side volley and there's gonna be driven to a specific player or to a specific place. So you need to be really good at performing with both. And finally, as I mentioned, leader. So now the goalkeeper is not just the last person, the whoever cares about him, he's now actually a character, a main character on the team. So he needs to be a good leader and a good example for the team. Okay, coming back to the distribution part that I think is one of the biggest change between the modern goalkeeping because, of course, shot stopping is always going to be a shot stopping. The technique is going to change a little bit nowadays. If you watch some videos, you can notice that they are using different techniques. But again, distribution, and we can talk about that in a different video. <clears throat> but distribution is going to be something that has changed a lot. So short passing is going to be crucial. If you notice, if you start watching more games, you're going to see that they don't play long that much. They want to start building up, wait for the other team to press, and then find different gaps. 
So being able to move that pass, finding different triangle, finding different spaces, giving the option for the other players to play back to you, it's going to be crucial. Reading the game, knowing where is your teammates. And then long passing, of course, again, is something, <laughs> if they're pressuring, they're pressuring well, and then you need to play long, that's something that you need to be able to. Goal kicks and throws. As I mentioned before, you don't see that often of a goalkeeper playing long from the goal kick. Now they play short. Same with the throw-ins. You don't see them punning really long or stuff like that. Coming back to the side volley, a more driven ball. And distribution under pressure, again, crucial. Now the goalkeeper should be able to play. With... I remember that before they used to say, like, all the great goalkeepers are left-footed. But, again, nowadays, I believe that's not the case. I believe you should be able to play with both feet and be able to basically distribute with both feet. So that's one of the biggest things about the new modern goalkeeping. Okay, now I just wanted to share some examples, and we're always almost coming to the end. So here's just examples of the modern goalkeeping. I hope you enjoyed this video. We can see here Manchester City against Manchester United. Ederson just playing a little bit more outside and then being able to just cut the cross. It wasn't Manchester United, sorry. Again, Ederson being able to play long, find the spaces. This is Allison, shot stopping. That's going to be crucial. And then they're staying as well. Making saves. You cannot forget you're a goalkeeper. You still need to make the save. That's still the most important characteristic of a goalkeeper. And then they're staying again. Look at him playing outside. And being able to distribute. Being able to find those spaces. What a ball. Of course, it wasn't the best control. But basically, this is the idea of the modern goalkeeper being, play, being able to play outside. Cutting passes. That sweeper goalkeeper there, making still good passing abilities and making good saves. Awesome. So coming to a conclusion, again, this is going to be a short. This is going to be my first episode, so expect more. And of course, again, things are meant to learn. We'll be progressing from here. Next step, something that I did mention a lot is keep seeking education. So you watching this, amazing. Keep doing this. Because I played the position, I was there, a lot of people told me, people keep learning, right? So it saved you a lot of time because I, I have been on my life playing this and I know what things work for me. And that's going to save all your time for you to figure out like, oh, I'm going to try all this and then figure out that sometimes things actually work. Keep watching soccer is going to be crucial if you want to be a great business, you're going to find a mentor, right? If you want to be good at the gym, you're going to find a mentor. You need to start watching more about the things that you need to, you want to get better. So start watching more soccer, start understanding more goalkeeping, analyze the goalkeeper. So it's not only watching the soccer, wow, Manchester United is winning, awesome. No, but understanding what the goalkeeper, if they score on the goalkeeper, what he think about what he could have done different, right? All these little details are going to help you to improve and start understanding the position. So, for example, if you show up for a game, don't just go show up. in the Whenever the game starts, go to the warm-ups. Watch all the things about the goalkeeper. And finally, again, the position has changed, and we can talk about this in the next week. The position has changed, so training needs to change. It's not about only just having a ball and shooting 50 shots, and then the goalkeeper making 50 shots, and that's it. Now the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper position has changed, training needs to change. You need to incorporate more distribution, uh, jo even juggling and stuff like that. You need to be really good with your feet. So make sure you update your training, make sure you have a good goalkeeper coach that is actually doing this and not just smashing balls for you. So next week we can speak about this. I'm gonna create a schedule with all the topics that I want to start covering during the weeks. But as for right now, this will be it for this week. Thank you very much for listening all the way here. I hope to see you in another one. Thank you.